we're going to take a minute and just go through some of those class improvements. And in fact, building up on what we're talking about earlier, as well as looking at how we can fix the wall slide, I think, in fact, we will do what I mentioned. Whilst I'm still going to keep the general wall jump how I, how I wanted it, which is that we have the jump from a wall followed by an additional air jump if the player chooses. Looking at the way that this is working, because we're resetting this anyway, this actually doesn't have anything to do with our jump count. So there's no reason for this to be after the bulk of logic that is checking for that. And in fact, if I were to have written this in C++, I think I would have just automatically done this first to check if we're in a wall jump and kind of got that bit of logic out of the way. So I'm going to cut this, making sure that we don't get confused now with what we have here. So really all we're doing is we're saying that if we're falling, then we're going to do the air jump. If we're not falling, we're going to do the ground jump. We can unhook this. And this is one of those things It's always good to try and keep the code as tidy as possible, whether that be in C++ or Blueprint. It's going to make managing it much easier for us. We can move that here. So these are our conditions for the type of jump we're going to do based on whether we're grounded or in the air and not touching anything at all, apart from the ground if you're grounded, I suppose. Then we've just said as well that these are not conditional to the current state of our jump count tally. So we're not going to need to account for those. So we're going to hook this up just ahead. So we'll instead do this first of all. So the first check we'll do is whether or not we are in a wall jump state. And we'll move this across. We could probably chuck this into its own function if we wanted to, but I think it's going to be nice to have everything clearly in one place. So again, if we wanted to come in quickly, change something, because this is housed away in a function already, uh, we don't really need to house a function within a function to keep things tidy. We will only be in this function if we ever wanted to update one of the different states of jumping that we have. So just a quick consideration I made there, but I think my final choice is that we're just going to drop it down this way. So we're going to come in, we'll check. The first thing we'll check now is whether we are in a wall slide. If we are, because we're not concerned about our jump count, we're just going to let the player jump. And if we're not, then we'll do our conditional check and then we'll go through all of this. So nothing's going to change. It's just a different way of reading it. And this means that if you wanted to avoid the setup that I have here, then it's going to make it much easier for you to avoid that additional wall jump setup, and you'll need to do uh, kind of less rejigging yourself. So that's just one quick change, and we'll improve the code that way a little bit. Uh, like I've mentioned, for, for my setup, I'm still going to go with this approach that I'm going to give it one less than the maximum jump count. Obviously, if we just set this to zero, just in case you're wondering why we didn't do that, that would essentially mean that you could do something possibly even uh, a little bit too easy in this case. So you could double jump onto a wall. Uh, rebound off of the walls and then do another double jump adding all of that extra velocity and that just looks a little bit too lenient so we're just going to get what the maximum jump count is take one away and add that uh, to set that to be our current jump count and then there are going to be some things here that we want to fix as well so uh, we only want to do this if falling i think all of this is okay we want to make sure so this is too long we don't really want all of this going on uh, we could probably promote this to a variable we could even make this a function again we i think what we can do with this is we will promote this to a variable it's not going to be extra expensive or provide an impact that we can't deal with to take the whole vector and again if we expand upon this we might want information about the whole vector a little bit later so we can store this now that means we don't need this to be dragged all the way along here so this will just help us tidy things up and let us choose where we place this. We're going to get our out hit normal, which could, we could probably rename to uh, wall hit normal because we might have a lot more kind of um, functionality in the project, which is going to be checking normal values. So this one's specific to our wall slide. We wanted the normal Z there, so we can just take this and kind of combine these together. I think the really important thing is we want to do this as soon as we hit our wall slide status. So not after the, the branch here, but as soon as we enter our wall slide. So we're going to need to move all of this along a little bit. And then I'll just paste this here. So as soon as we come in, we will change the jump count and 
before we even do the velocity check, we want to make sure that we snap the character to rotate around. So this should just look a little bit more responsive. So we can check that straight away actually and just see if there's anything else we need to do here. And I just realized there, it wasn't the, so we had a bit of a problem. You can see what was happening uh, just before I fix it. Uh, you can see that on one wall, we're not rotating. On the other one, we are. Uh, I wasn't taking the wall hit normal directly. We were getting the rotation. I think it's rotation from X. Uh, and of course we need that from the vector, not the, the Z. So I keep trying to home in on the Z there. So rotation from X vector. That's what we were using. And then we're going to split this one. So I just seem to have gotten rid of some of the old logic when I was moving things around, trying to tidy that up. So we'll plug that in to our check here. And that should now work the same way. We just want to move a few things out of the way. We could probably move all of this up a little bit. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate that because we need this reset, it's not very easy, or we can't do a do once inside of a function. So it would be nice to collapse all of this into a function. But I think in this case, uh, we can probably leave this where it is. That would be perfectly fine. That should now work as it was previously. Just forgot that I'd replaced the wrong thing there. And yeah, that looks much snappier now. So that just feels a lot more responsive that as soon as we hit the wall, uh, regardless of whether we have some vertical movement going on, so some positive Z velocity, we're immediately flipping, which means we get a much more responsive wall jump setup. So that's better. I'm happy of that. Uh, you could if you wanted, I'm not a huge fan of this, but if you wanted this to be its own thing, but still work with a do once, you could collapse the nodes, which gives you this. And I think in, in this case, actually, because we don't have that flexibility, we'll call this one the wall jump check or wall slide check. On these, if you're not aware, you can provide an execution pin. So we can change this from a variable to an execution pin. Uh, we'd call this one, I guess, return or something just in case you wanted to drive more logic from this. Uh, like I said, normally I'm not a huge fan of these. I don't use them very much in my code. Maybe in rare cases like this, where it's going to be quite important that we have this do once for this kind of uh, additional step of making the wall slide feel nice. Otherwise, I wouldn't be too worried about putting this into a function, but we do want to make sure that we can reset this just to get that initial kind of snappy, sticky feeling to the wall. And I think overall, they are the updates and the checks that we wanted to add just to make our mechanics feel better so that is the logic that we're kind of directly responsible for implemented and improved which leaves us with just the general overall feel of our character utilizing the character movement component getting the most out of the character class and really making this feel like our own because at the moment we haven't actually changed very much from what you'd see in the default third person template. And that was the whole idea of this is that we're looking to see how we can make this our own project, how we can really make this stand out. So that's what we'll be doing in the next topic. We'll be looking at how to change some of the variables, what we have available and how to make those feel better. Hopefully you've enjoyed that content. And just a reminder, if you wanted to get access to the full topics in this mini course, it's already fully available and uploaded over on Skillshare and providing links in the description down below, which will allow you to sign up with a free premium trial. You'll gain full access to all of the courses over on Skillshare, including this 3D platformer focused controller topic. So be sure to check that out if you wanted to take advantage of the offer whilst it lasts. And as always, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the people supporting all of the work that I do here on YouTube, allowing me to keep making this weekly content. So a big thank you to all of the names scrolling down the screen.